Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Tom, if you hadn't noticed. And I'm from Trim Editing in London, um, where we cut music videos and commercials and films. Uh, I'm going to start by playing a little showreel of uh, some stuff we've worked on recently. Salut! The journey begins. I always felt borderless. Today, I feel like I belong everywhere. It's not about how you look, it's an energy. It got no borders. It's really beautiful. It's a much more fun life to be an open person. Thank you. <clears throat> so there's a few of the bits we've been working on over the last year or so. Um, what I want to do today is talk to you a bit about music video and a bit about commercials. Uh, we're going to start with music video, and we're going to take a look at this Ed Sheeran video that I cut, Cast on the Hill. Uh, it's done really well on YouTube. It's had a few hundred thousand views, and it's gone down quite well. So that's a little bit of the final video. Let's jump across into Final Cut, though, and look at how we put some of it together. So I'm going to start with organization. Uh, I've got my stuff organized here, and I'm going to jump in and show you how I begin to break all my stuff down. I've got all my scenes. First thing I do, though, is I go through and I use rejects to start getting rid of all the sort of crap footage that I don't ever want to see again. So for example, we've got all this red stuff at the front here. This is all, everything before action, everything after everything after cut. So, and then when I come down here, and I'll just skim through very quickly, and I'll put an out point and reject. And when the shot dies, I'm going to do an in point and reject. And then I can just come up here, and I can hide those bits, so I don't ever have to see that stuff again. And if my assistant's gone through and do, done that, and I don't trust them too much, I can jump back, and I can really easily see, without matching back, which, uh, which bits they've rejected for me. Next stage of the process is uh, going through and selecting it. So I've got my different scenes here broken down. And for example, let's start on this stock racing scene. All these little green sections here, these are the favorited portions of the clips. That's what I'm using to select the bits I like in the clips. And this is when I'll go through in much finer detail. I'll be going through using in and outs with JKNL. And as you can see, I don't really have to stop and start chucking stuff into timelines. I can just go in, out, F the favorite. I can extend that favorite. And then I can just view all those favorites and let them play back. Um, one thing I really like about this is that I'm not having to deal with string out timelines. I'm not having to deal with select timelines. And I can just, once I'm viewing my favorites, I can click through all these different scenes. And these are all my favorite portions from those scenes. Or I can click a few different ones and see the favorites for those few selected bits. One really good thing here is that when I'm, when I'm working away and a director says, oh, I'm sure there was a little bit before here that I, you've missed that I really liked, rather than having to sort of match back and find other sequences, I can just jump back here and see the boundaries of the bits that I haven't selected. And if I wanted or this bit here, the director wants to put this in, I can favorite that, and then that's there right in context. So with a music video like this, there's a lot of sync. So I've got all these sync takes down here. Now, it wasn't a multi-camera multi shoot, because there's only, obviously, one Ed Sheeran, as my niece would say. Um, so what we've got here is I've got all these different angles, but I still sync them up in a multi-cam, because obviously they sync, because he's singing the track, or he should be. Let's open this up. So I've got all my angles there synced up. You can see they're really nicely stacked. And if we have a look here, you can see those are all the takes stacked up really nicely. If I want to add a new angle, it's really simple. I can use. Uh, I could be using uh, waveforms or timecode to be syncing it up. But on this one, it was shot on film, so I'm just having to do it manually. So we go add angle, I select the angle, and then I've got a shot up here I can write in. Then we can play My it back. Brother and, his friends. Play back. and we'll just see if it's in sync. And tasted a 
So knock that back a little bit. So once I feel that's in sync, I might want to rename it. Car close up. Uh, close up one. And then I might want to just reorder it in the multicam so I can pick this up and move it up so it fits with the other things. And that's just reordering the stack. And I can do this at any time. So if they've gone out and shot more angles or I've discovered a new angle we want to put in, I can go into the multicam, put that in, resync it, color correct it, and do all that kind of stuff. And it's going to ripple through to all my sequences. So the next thing I do is I treat all these clips like I sort of treat them like they're just single clips rather than multicam clips, because I want to see every angle and really check that and be able to say to the director that I've been through and looked at all the performance one by one. So I go through and I build up this timeline. And let's have a look at the final timeline here. And then what I get is this bed of performance underneath. And even though I know I'm not going to be using performance all the way throughout, it's really useful to go through and just build up that bed of performance. So I always know I've got great stuff. If I want to move a scene around, it's always there. And then let's just open up the uh, multicam viewer here. So you can see all the angles there, which is really handy if I want a quick reference for what other stuff I might have. And even, this even if I'm looking at the narrative footage above, I can skim across here. I'm skimming across the narrative scenes, but I can see the shots below within the multicam. So that's really handy. And then where the multicam really comes into play for me is that once I'm in the edit process, deep in cutting, like a week or two weeks in, and I'm at a section like this, Years I might feel like we want to change this shot out. We want to change this shot of Ed for something else. He doesn't like it. The director doesn't like it. And then I just, with the shortcut, I'll just fire through the angles like this. Do I like that one? And then I can see it in context. I'm not having to go off to a sequence where I've stacked everything up in sync or going to a bin or anything like that or having these pancake timelines. I can just flick through and see those angles in context with the shots before and after. So that's really useful. So the next thing I want to talk about is how I deal with the narrative. You might have noticed that I've got these blocks of narrative above. Now, what you might not have noticed is that they're, they're all in their own connected storylines. And what that means is they become these little, like, little blocks of narrative and these little contained stories. And that means that if I pick this up and I want to move this scene around, I can just move the whole scene around. And I've got that great bit of performance below. I know I've always got that there. But also, it means that if I want to reorder stuff, because they work like little magnetic timelines, so if we come in here, if I want to reorder some shots in here, I could pick this up and move it across. And if I wanted to extend it, I can extend it like that. And it's just affecting that little narrative block that I've been working on. So for example, here, that flash there, I always want that to be on that big bit of the chorus coming in. So we've got that that musical beat there. And because this is a separate little kind of storyline sort of block, I can, I can be adjusting and moving the bits before, and it's, not going to, um, and it's not going to knock that stuff out of sync. And that just sort of lives its own self-contained thing. And then the last thing I just want to talk about very quickly on here is sound design and sound. Now, usually on a music video, the artist isn't really up for you fucking about with their track for obvious reasons. So. We've just got a little bit of sound design up the front here. Let's turn this up. And that was just to give a sense that it's sort of the director pretending he's a feature film director for about 20 seconds before the film starts. So we've just got that atmosphere built there. What he wanted to do, though, is he wanted to create a sense that there's like, we wanted to put some kind of tone underneath it, but we didn't want it to be, we didn't want it to be another music track, obviously. That also doesn't go down well with big label artists. So what we did was we took a bit of the tr actual track. This bit in the middle here. Let me just grab that. I'm just going to connect that down there. Let's get some waveforms up so you can see what's going on. And then we slowed it right down. I'm just going to solo this as well so you can just hear that track. Then we slowed it right down. Make it a bit longer. And then I might. And then what I did, I wanted this last note to really ring out. So I'm going to blade the speed here. So let's blade the speed and slow the back half down even more. These are the fade handles. So we can just pull that out so it really rings out. And I might just put a fade handle on the front and the end and pull that in. So that sounds pretty good, but I kind of want it to, I want it to sound like it's, um, I want it to sound like sort of it's a bit more bedded in. So. I'm just going to just close this down. I'm just going to open up my inspector and my effects panel. And then I'm going to bring in some effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull in a modest cathedral, a bit of reverb, 
just put that reverb right on. Then we're going to put on, I'm going to muffle that as well, just to make it sort of feel like it's bedded in. And then I can write just somewhere around, let's just say around there. And we'll bring in the other sound effects. And we'll drop the volume a bit. And let's have a look, that's feeling quite good. So really quickly, I'm able to just sort of build up that noise there and really kind of just build up something that sounds quite good. That's sounding pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to talk to you about, about commercial. So let's jump across here. Now, with sound, talking about sound there, in a commercial, I do a lot more sound editing, obviously. Um, what I want to talk about is this Audi commercial I did with Daniel Wolf. Now, he's a director who does a lot of... Um, he does a lot of character work. He, people love his casting and the act, uh, performances he gets from actors. But in this job, there was actually no, there were no characters in it. It was just the car. So we had to bring out a lot of um, ca as much character as we could and as much life from the car and from the um, from the environment that it's through. So let's take a look at the final ad. That's where we got to with the final piece. Jump back across here. And I'm just going to open up the, uh, open up the Audi project for you. Just give me two secs. So what we did on this one, we actually, um, we actually did a lot of work with sound design to just, get the, um, to just get that character across. That was the thing we used to, like, to build up that character and build up the space. So let me just open this up. And I'll give you my final timeline. There we go. So there's my final timeline. And as you can see, there's a lot of sound design here. I've got all these different roll colors. I've got the different rolls for the different sort of types of sound. So all the effects are these sort of teal colored clips. I'll just give you a bit more room there. These teal colored clips. I've got the Audi engine noises. These are the orange ones. And the Audi tire noises. Those are all the pink ones. So straight away, you can see what the different parts of my timeline are. And you can, it's really easy for me to differentiate those different elements. And then all of that role information, that will go out to, to sound mixing. If it's roles in the picture, it can go out to VFX. And we've, we can use it at all places, all sort of parts of the process. What I love as well is I can take those roles and I can organize my timeline into lanes like this. So if I want to have those roles pulled out, I can sort of organize it like that. I can then also all begin to swap the timeline around. If I want the music at the bottom and I want to move the effects to the top, I can do that. But right now, we'll chuck the effects to the bottom. Let's go music at the top. And also, if I don't want to just if I'm happy for everything to be sat as it is, but I just want to organize one, one role, I can pull out my effects into their own role. And then beyond that, I can pull out the sub roles. So that's like the effects, the atmos, and the sound design. These are all pulled out into their own little sub roles. And I can even juggle those around. So I can get really granular with the organization. Let's just jump back out here. Let's get some waveforms up. The last thing about the organization I really like here as well is if I'm, say, I'm working on this music track, I can press this focus thing, and everything else is going to go really miniature. So I'm just focusing on that music track. Now, when I'm in an edit like this, um, I, I always want to be keeping my mind open to ideas that the director might be having, however you know, different they might be to my ideas. And on a job like this, we, were, we did, spent a lot of time switching the different scenes around, because they're, they're all quite self-contained scenes. So it's really handy just having all my sound effects. I've associated all those sound effects with that scene. So this ice scene here, let's just play a bit back. Tell you what, I'm just going to get rid of the music for now, just so we can focus on the other noises. 
So all those sound effects, those are all associated with, that, with those shots. So I've chosen to connect them at those points. And if I want to move that scene, I can just pull it over here, and all of that stuff goes with it. So I'm not having to sort of... I'm not having to mess around with like managing all that stuff. It's really good when you're in the sort of creative zone, just be able to do this stuff and do it quickly without having get all the stuff getting in your way. Another thing that happens on a commercial a lot is I have to do a cut down. Um, I've actually taken to doing cut downs of all my work, whether I need to or not, and that's really just to kind of focus my mind down on what the minimum amount I need to tell the story is. So this is 60 seconds, but can I tell it in 10 seconds or six seconds or five shots? You know, how fewer shots do I need? And then I can go and get the nice car shots and bring those in and start really building it back up from that skeleton, but it's really focused it down. Um, so on this one, we're gonna, you know, if I was going to do a cut down here, I would start by going through and getting rid of all the big stuff. So we've got three shots here setting up this scene. I'm just going to take this clock and get rid of that. We've got red, amber, and green here. We're just going to get rid of the red and amber and stick with the green. And if I jump down here, this scene here can probably, we'll lose the close up the wheel and we'll lose that, lose both those. This scene here, the client doesn't want the ice, so we'll get rid of that as well. And then if I play through here, I'm going to lose that opening shot. We'll lose the middle shot as well, and then I'll lose that close up there. And then the car's obscured here, we'll lose that. Uh, the lingerie scene is a little too sexy for TV in the UK, maybe not here. Uh, and then what else have we got? We'll trim this one down. I'm going to do all the titles, we're going to do that all on the end frame, so we'll get rid of that and we'll get rid of the, the kiosk because we don't need that. Then I can come in and I can add those titles on here, so extreme grip. She's using the title tool there on the screen just to do that. Extreme grip for every day trips, if I can spell. There you go. Done. I didn't do well at school, clearly. Um, so that first pass, I've got it down to 37 seconds from 60. Then I'll go through and start like finding which bits of the shots I really want. So here, I'm just going to probably cut out there. This monkey, we can probably lose the end off. This shot here, I don't need this pan down. I just want the bit when the car whips round, so I'll go through and I'll just select the bit I want before it does that, and I can trim the start and the end with one shortcut. Here I've got a shot that's speed ramped in the middle, this pan down. So if I wanted to, I could, change, I could bring, the, bring the end in as well, speed that up, or I could use a shortcut just to double speed the whole clip. As we go through here, we'll just trim some of this down. So I like that. Right here, I want to take off these sound effects as well because I don't want those to overlap. So let's trim all those. I think we'll swap this scene around so we start with the water. Actually, no, do we want to start with the water? Okay, no, we will start with the water. Let's do that. As we come through here, take that off. Take that off. Here, I want to start with the car just going straight over the milk. So let's trim it there. That's a bit long. I can, if I want to, I can sort of be coming in and doing, you know, things with frames. I can, I, you know, I can be trimming by frames or trimming over here or doing a roll edit. Obviously, I can do all of that stuff as well. Let's take one frame off there. And then, last but not least, I'm eight frames over. I'm going to select these, these four shots. And I'm going to say duration minus two frames of those four shots. There we go. And we're at 30. So I'm going to take a 30-second music track that I've got. They've done a mix for me, and I'm going to back time that, put that in, and then let's have a look and see how it feels. Hopefully, it looks all right. So I'm just going to shut. Let's watch this, because I quite like being able to have my timeline and the whole thing. So we'll just watch it there with the whole thing there. Let's have a look. Okay, it still needs work. Still needs work, but it's looking pretty good. And um, that's all I've got for you today. If anyone wants to come and see me, I'm going to be outside at the FCP work stage. So you come and say hi. Um, thank you very much.